All right, before we get started, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Mac Weldon. That would be the shirt I'm wearing, in case you couldn't tell by that dramatic intro. But they really are the one-stop shop for men's basics of all kinds, socks, shirts, underwear, hoodies. Their new adjustable Storm Chaser rain jacket, which I'm from Washington, we know a thing or two about rain and we never use umbrellas. Jackets though, yeah. And Mac Weldon really does value its loyal customers. That's why they created the Weldon Blue loyalty program. Here's how it works. Create an account that's totally free. Then place an order for any amount. You never pay shipping again, that's level one. Then once you purchase two dollars worth of product from Mac Weldon that gets you to level two. Not only will you continue to get free shipping, level two also grants you access to new products before they're released to anyone else, as well as free gifts added to future orders. I wanted something I could use in video, so I got me some shirts. All on the spectrum of dark blue to light blue, you <laughs> know, blues and purples. That's my pocket right there. So click the link below to go to MacWeldon.com slash Johns, enter promo code Johns, get yourself 20% off your order, which would also have free shipping. So there you go, saving more money. I got your back. And thank you very much to Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video. It really helps me out a lot. I do appreciate it. All right, let's see if Staten Island has a king. The king of Staten Island. Welcome to Staten Island. Uh, there's so many intros I could do. So many dad jokes. Anyhow, king of Staten Island. So the king of Staten Island is the newest Judd Apatow film. It stars Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson's character in this movie, his father was a firefighter who was killed putting out a fire. And Pete Davidson's father in real life was a firefighter who was a first responder who was killed as a result of the 9-11 attack. So you get this is probably a very personal project for Pete Davidson. And it being a Judd Apatow film, it's very Judd Apatow, for better or worse. Well, first of all, what I liked about the movie is I thought Pete Davidson was really good. There's just something I connected with with his character. Also, I mean, I like Pete Davidson. I just, I really, I dig dark humor. And I don't get why people are like, all right, it's time for dark humor to be no more. We need dark humor because if you're a human being, you're fucked up. And Pete Davidson has that in this movie and he plays the role really well, which, I mean, <laughs> some people are probably gonna be like, yeah, but he kind of, plays Pete Davidson. I mean, I could be in a movie titled The YouTube Movie Review Guy about a guy who talks movie reviews online. Doesn't mean I'm gonna be any good at it. But I thought Pete Davidson did a really good job. Also, I like the fact that this movie conveys what comics, comedians, otherwise funny people who don't go on stage, it just kind of shows who they are on the inside. Generally, people are funny as a defense mechanism. It's a shield, not a sword. It's they have pain. It's how they've dealt with their pain. And in this movie, it's very apparent that Pete Davidson's character is, that's how he deals with pain. He's hiding a lot. There's a lot on this dude's shoulders, just emotionally speaking, and you feel that. And that's what this movie is. It's the odyssey of this person's life for however long the movie takes place, what, an amount of weeks? But it's the growth that this character needs to find. You would swear if you watch the trailer, it's about this guy who interns at a fire department. That's not until the last half hour of the movie. Really, it's about this person not knowing where they're going, making all the bad decisions. So he's not a bad person, he's just trying to figure his shit out. I thought the supporting cast was good too, like Bill Burr is one of my favorite comics. He plays a pretty large role in the movie. He's great, he brings that Bill Burr wit, but also, he's a little toned back. He's less cynical than Bill Burr comes across as. And in true Judd Apatow fashion, I thought the dialogue among the friends, it was just connectable, relatable friend dialogue. It was funny, it was witty. There were more than a few times in this movie I laughed pretty hard. You get the chuckles, but you also have the hard laughs. And also, yes, the movie has heart and gets serious when it needs to. Also, in true Judd Apatow fashion, the movie's longer than it needs to be and you feel it. I know I've said that about a few movies lately, but know this, anytime I say that about a movie, I think of Judd Apatow. He's like the gold standard of that. Every one of his movies is longer than it probably needs to be. This is a two hour and 17 minute movie about a dude figuring his shit out. This movie is going to connect with you or not based on how you connect with the character and what he's dealing with in the movie. And I personally did, because I, I suppose I, I get what it's like to be in your mid twenties, not knowing what the fuck you're gonna do in life. I heard, I heard someone, I forgot the YouTuber said something like, YouTubers are homeless people. Like, if YouTube didn't happen, they'd be homeless. They, they're people who got lucky. I concede to that, absolutely. If YouTube didn't happen, I'd still be at a movie theater starting movies. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be a projectionist. Turns out I, I kind of tripped and fell into something that works. And I like to think I work hard at it. But point is, I know what it's like to be in this character's shoes. Yes, absolutely. You didn't know that, did ya? Behind this put together exterior is the soul of that man. <laughs> 
shortest leap you'll ever have to take ever. I'll tell you that. And my connection with the movie and the character started out pretty early in the movie. He says something about being on antidepressants, which I gotta say, 2020 was a great year for me to start Lexapro. I didn't know what 2020 was gonna bring us. I didn't know it was going to be 2020. Had no idea, but I can only imagine my state of mind without it. I'd be a fucking wreck. Funny thing is for the longest time, I was really resistant to the idea. I was like, I don't wanna get medicated. Get out of my face with that shit. All right, so excuse me while I go and worry about everything bad that can possibly happen and mentally deal with it as though it is most definitely going to happen. So yeah, here's the good decision making. Yeah, your dick's gonna only work 75%, but you know, who doesn't? It's fine. They got pills for that too. I mean, in the movie, it was kind of a dialogue and passing, but I don't know, it was cool. <laughs> I got where he was coming from. So for me, in the end, I did. I connected with the movie. It drags its feet a little bit. Sure, it's a little long <laughs> for nothing else. You're just kind of watching a guy go through his month. It doesn't really tell how much time passes. It's a very relatable movie for a lot of people because I think there's more people out there who don't have their shit figured out or didn't at that age than do or did. I thought The King of Staten Island was a good time, no alcohol required. It's funny, you can find it on, like I rented it on Amazon Prime. Um, it's like 20 bucks to rent. That's how much things cost to buy. But if you get like a crew of four people together, if you get the whole family or a group of friends and you just pay 20 bucks and all of you can watch it, I guess you're saving money more so than if you watched it in the movie theaters. But if it's just you, yeah, you're getting robbed. <laughs> this is the reality. At least have one friend over, so it's kind of like the cost of a movie ticket. So The King of Staten Island, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.